Okay, so we're gonna essentially do a slit lamp 101 course where we're just gonna do a step-by-step -step process of how to use the slit lamp and do a slit lamp examination. You know, there's a lot of controls to the slit lamp and uh, it can get a little bit confusing, so I'm hopeful that this video is helpful to people who haven't had experience with the slit lamp. So, the first thing that you wanna do before you even start your slit lamp exam is gather uh, appropriate supplies. So things that you may need for the slit lamp would be a tetracane or preparacane, a fluorazine eye strip to do um, staining to look for abrasions or ulcerations, cotton tips for eyelid eversion, an alcohol swab to disinfect the slit lamp, and some gauze or a tissue uh, for the patient's tears. Some other things that you may need would be um, a 27 gauge needle with a 3cc syringe to do foreign body removals, or um, one of the spuds, you can do a metallic foreign body removal with a spud. And additionally, if you suspect a metallic foreign body, you wanna grab the burr so that you can drill some of the rust out or the rust ring. So once you've gathered all your appropriate supplies, the first thing that you wanna do is disinfect the slit lamp. Nobody really knows who the last person was that touched this, whether it was a snotty kid or somebody with conjunctivitis. So just go ahead and do yourself a favor and do the patient a favor and disinfect the slit lamp on the uh, areas that the patient's gonna to be touching. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick. I just use an alcohol swab. It's also give your patient a little bit of reassurance. So we got that disinfected. All right. Good, I'm gonna throw that away. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna do is wheel the slit lamp in front of the patient. So I'm just gonna set it here. And what you want to do is make sure that the slit lamp is plugged in. You have a plug here on the wall, of course, and then there's also a plug at the base of the table. This can get loose, so just go ahead and put that in and make sure that that's good and plugged in. And now what you want to do is make some of the necessary adjustments before you have the patient come forward, just to make sure that you're at an appropriate starting point. So first thing that I would do is adjust the eyepieces to your pupillary distance. So these move out and back. So you're just gonna kinda get a feel for what feels good, and that's good. The next thing that I would do is adjust the slit lamp angle adjustment as well as the microscope. So these should be parallel to one another. And now what you can do is you can turn the light on. You got your switch here. So we're gonna go ahead and turn that on, and it should illuminate. All right, so you can see we're starting with blue light, which is not what we want. So we'll make some adjustments to get ourselves to the right place. You can just start at the top of the lamp and work your way down to all the necessary controls. So the first thing you wanna do, this is your light source. You wanna make sure that your light is in a vertical axis. You can see the beam here on my hand, that's vertical, which is where you wanna be. Now if you turn this, that's a horizontal axis. And actually, using this knob here, which controls, it's the blue light filter, as well as the length of the slit, you can do measurements, which, let's see, if you see there, I turn that and the beam gets shorter, shorter, shorter. So that height right there, the beam is five millimeters. Keep going, that's three millimeters. So that gets you the vertical axis and that gets you the horizontal axis. So say you're measuring a corneal abrasion or a corneal ulcer, you focus on the cornea and you can get the measurement and give that to the ophthalmologist uh, if you do have to consult and uh, they'll be happy because that kind of changes some of their treatment plan based off of the measurement. So anyways, we've got the light source and the vertical axis. This is the filter lever. Just have the filter lever all the way to the left. Uh, this is all the way open. There's some additional filters that ophthalmology uses, but for our purposes, it's not really important. Here you have the slit lamp uh, length, which we talked about, as well as blue light. Now all the way to the left gets you blue light. One click right gets you white light. So you'll obviously need the blue light to use with your fluorzine, the white light just to do your regular exam. Okay, moving down here, we have our magnification selector. You have 10, 16, and 25. It's most appropriate to start at a magnification selector of 10. Okay, moving down a little further. This controls the width of your beam. So. If I open that up, the beam gets wider. If I close that, the beam gets narrower. So generally, I have the beam narrower when I start. Additionally, you have the light intensity, which is down here. Um, you know, somewhere in the middle is about where you wanna be. 
when you're doing exams for um, patients that are photophobic, you can turn the light intensity back down. When you're looking for anterior chamber cell and flare, you want to turn the intensity all the way up. So we're just going to kind of keep it there in the middle. All right, so the other thing is to bring the slit lamp all the way back and uh, have the joystick back. That's your starting position. So now that we've made all the necessary adjustments to the slit lamp, we have it on the appropriate light setting, the appropriate width, length, illumination control, um, you're about good to go with the exam. So uh, what we're gonna do is go ahead and do the drops and the fluorazine stain for the eye to be examined. I'm just gonna open these up and open this up. What I like to do is do the drop and the fluorazine in one step. It just saves me a little bit of time. Second, go over here. All right. Just put a drop right there. Okay. And then tilt your head back. This might sting a little bit, but it won't last very long. Okay, blink. Okay, good. So we got that done. Also give the patient a gauze or a tissue for them to block their tears. You're welcome. <laughs> All right. So now that you have that done, you're going to wheel the slit lamp in front of the patient. You're going to lock the wheels. And now you need to make adjustments to the height of the slit lamp as well as the chin rest and instruct the patient on appropriate positioning. So a lot of times, um, Positioning is kind of one of the most important things with, with the slit lamp exam. Um, so for somebody like uh, the patient that we have here, man, you're gonna need to just kind of scoot forward on the chair, not the chair itself, but just on the chair. Okay, good. And then the goal is to get this black mark at the lateral canthus. So you have the, um, you have the headband, the chin rest, and the chin rest or chin height adjustment is here. And you also have a lever down here which controls the height of the slit lamp. So what I'm going to do is bring the slit lamp up and then I'm going to lower the chin rest just a little bit if I'm eyeballing it. And when I tell the patient, I'll say, come forward, put your chin in the cup and your head against the white bar. Okay, that looks pretty good. And you have the black mark or the height mark right at the lateral canthus. So that's going to give you a good starting point. You can sit back for a second. Um, additionally, with um, patients that are larger that uh, maybe there's something in the way that prevents them from leaning forward. If you lower the slit lamp to a lower height, they can lean into the slit lamp a little bit more, which gives you that ability to do their exam. And then with children, you can have children sit on a parent's lap or they can stand. Um, so you have a couple options with kids. Uh, you just wanna make sure that the patient's in a comfortable position, otherwise you're not really gonna get a good exam. I'm gonna bring that back up a little bit. So you're gonna come forward, put your chin in the cup and your head against the white bar. Good. So as time goes on, patients have a tendency to have their head fall back off of the slit lamp. So if you're ever finding that you're out of focus, just go ahead and kind of make sure that they're still chin forward and head forward. All right, so to start your slit lamp exam, you want to unlock the locking screw, which is right here. All right, so that's unlocked. And now the microscope itself can move freely on the base of the table. So you got the light shined on the eye. What you're gonna do is with the joystick or the control lever all the way back, you're gonna look through the microscope and you're gonna move it forward until the eye comes into focus. And you'll notice that I haven't used the joystick at all yet. So the light's in focus and then, that's essentially gross focus, fine focus, I can move the joystick and that gives me better focus. Moving the control lever up or clockwise, moves the light up. Moving the control lever down, moves the light down. You can move it left, you can move it right. The other thing that you need to kind of work with is the slit lamp angle adjustment. So this moves 180 degrees. And when you look at the temporal side of the eye, you want it coming in tangentially to the eye. So if I'm looking temporally, I'm coming in at a 45 degree angle this way. If I'm looking nasally, I'm coming in at a 45 degree angle this way. 
Now with respect to doing the exam, it's important to have a systematic approach to how you do your exam. So for me, what I like to do is I start with the external structures. So I'm gonna look through here. I'm gonna look at external structures. So we're gonna look at the cheek. I'm gonna scan the cheek. And then I'm gonna look at the nose. Okay. And then I'm gonna look at the brow. Okay, I can see all of that. Now we're gonna do lids and lashes. So looking down here, looking at all the eyelashes and looking at the eyelids, of course. You can see the puncta. Scan up. Okay, good. Now at this point, you can go ahead and do an eyelid eversion if it's indicated. Obviously, if somebody's complaining of a foreign body sensation, you should go ahead and do an eyelid eversion. So, uh, Miss, could you close your eyes? Now, don't squeeze them, but just keep them gently closed. All right. I'm going to turn your eyelid inside out. Good. You can hold it there and then you can scan the eye and that looks pretty good. I'm going to turn that back. All right. Open up your eye. All right. So we've done lids and lashes. Now we're going to look at the conjunctiva and the sclera. Look up, please. Look to your left. Good. Look to your right. Okay. And look down. Okay, now we're going to look at the conjunct, or excuse me, the cornea. So for this, you can scan with the white light. So again, I'm temporal, so my sit lamp angle is coming in at a 45 degree angle. I'm going to scan that. Once I cross the midline, I move the sit lamp adjustment to the right, and then I can look at the other side. And here is where you want to use blue light. So you want the room dark. Let's go ahead and turn the lights off, please. You're going to turn one click to the left for blue light. Mm -hmm. And now we're scanning with blue light. And I'm, of course, looking for any abrasions or ulcerations or keratitis or anything along those lines that might be affecting the cornea. So now we've done the blue light and we can switch back to white light. One click to the right gets you white light. You can turn the lights back up. Okay. So that looks pretty good. The next thing that you're going to do is you're going to move on to the um, an anterior chamber. So for anterior chamber exams, of course, you're looking for things like cell, flare, um, hypopions, hyphemas. So, sorry, that's bright. Normally the exam doesn't take this long, so uh, normally it's just a few minutes. Um, so what, what we're going to do is we're going to turn the slit lamp angle adjustment at a 45 degree angle. You're going to move forward and you're gonna focus on the pupil. You can change the height of the beam this way and change the length of the beam this way. That gets you a little better kind of uh, area to focus on the anterior chamber. So focus on the pupil, rock back, magnify yourself up to 25 power, and then let's go ahead and turn the lights off. So a dark room is also important for uh, anterior chamber exams. It's gonna give you a much better picture of if there's any cell or flare in the eye. And in this case there, of course, is not because this is a normal eye. Okay, go ahead and you can turn the lights back up. We're gonna take ourselves back down from 25 back to 10. And then you can um, look at the iris, which looks fine. And then you can look at the, uh, the lens, which also looks fine. No cataracts. All right, you can sit back. So when you're done, lock the locking screw. This is an expensive piece of equipment, and um, if this is just kind of free floating around on the table, it can get damaged. So we're gonna lock that, and we're gonna pull this away by unlocking the locking wheels. Over here. Of course, turn it off. So uh, the slit lamp exam, it's obviously very technical um, and it takes a lot of practice to get yourself good and proficient at it. But if for every eye patient that you have, you do a slit lamp exam, certainly with time, you're gonna get better and you're gonna do your uh, patient a lot of favors by doing a more thorough exam with the slit lamp. Okay, thank you for your time.